resources and journeymen to keep the complex machinery going. Because Quad needs highly trained workers to maintain production equipment, Wisconsin's apprenticeship training programs are a perfect fit. In fact, the company has used those programs in its facilities elsewhere. Let's listen to Nate Butt, himself trained as an apprentice and now managing production support with corporate oversight for apprenticeship programs. It's a difficult thing to teach someone who is coming from the outside. It can be done, but if you've gone through the process and once you get, like we've had a few journeymen go through the process, they, are, they become the best teachers because they understand the, the way the learning works. We are currently using the apprenticeship model in Wisconsin, the structure that we have in both electrical, industrial electrical and mechanical. Um, that structure, it really is the same for both. In, um, in other states where we have, uh, we don't have that structure in place. And Quad Graphics Vice President Tom Frankowski on the importance of apprenticeship to the company. We, we've been involved in the uh, Wisconsin Apprenticeship Program since 2002. Uh, we've had 21 apprentice uh, graduates, uh, 17 of those people in the electrical area, four of them in the mechanical area. Currently we have 28 appre apprentices in our program uh, as, we, as we look at growing our company. Uh, from 2010 looking forward, we believe our growth model just in the state of Wisconsin will create 1,500 new jobs as we continue to grow our business, consolidate the market share here at our Wisconsin plants, uh, and put in uh, new technology. Apprenticeship training programs in Wisconsin are utilized in the service sector as well, both where people might expect to find them and possibly where many might not. Barbers, cosmetologists, and food service workers have long benefited from apprenticeship training in Wisconsin, as have the small retail businesses that provide services to the public. At Blue's Egg Restaurant in Milwaukee, Alex Johnson, an apprentice sous chef and line cook, explains how he, on his own initiative, began his apprenticeship and what it means to him. I started working at Blue's Egg in late June, early July, is that, and um, it's my first cooking job. I've had an interest in the restaurant industry for a long time, and I finally got my foot in the door. Um, I was looking at two-year programs or just uh, cooking schools in general throughout the state and even out of state. And I read an article in The Shepherd about how the apprenticeship is a good way to go about it. I talked to my owner, uh, Joe, about the, the apprenticeship program, and he mentioned how it's a really good idea. It's a more old-fashioned way of going through the restaurant industry. And I decided to look into it and got enrolled, in, uh, got enrolled into it. Everything that I'm learning in school is things that I can take on the job and do in, in my work. In five years, I hope to be uh, either uh, running, a, running a line, running a kitchen, being a sous chef, being able to do everything that Joe, my, uh, Joe the owner, can do. And Blue's Egg owner-manager Joe Minch explains why apprenticeship is important to his business. I mean, having skilled trained people is definitely a, a, uh, an essential because, I mean, the, the failure rate in restaurants is so high. I mean, it's 90% in the first two years and 80% in the next, four, you know, two years after that. So the first four years you have, you know, um, a success rate of about, you know, 10 to 15% at most. And um, if you don't have skilled people in the positions that it's essential. And so I think the, the apprenticeship really gives a commitment from some of your employees to really be there. In another Milwaukee business, G's clipping and hairstyling, apprenticeship training is also important. G's clipping provides the services of barbers and cosmetologists to the community. Let's listen to owner manager Grawlin Smith. I've had to date 21 apprentices to be exact. I think the apprenticeship program offers a, a, a real skilled person, you know, a person that, you know, that is able to uh, earn money, you know, in the shop and getting real instruction at school. They, they get to learn a lot about the business through how I do it. And let's hear from apprentice Jason Saunders. This is the opportunity I've been waiting for to kind of like build a foundation for me and my family. In Wisconsin's public sector, nowhere does apprenticeship training play a more crucial role than in our professional firefighting departments. 
Recruit apprentices of the Madison Fire Department, for example, receive intensive training before they ever go on the job, as recruit apprentice Matt Klein describes. They start out from square one because there's such a variety of background uh, of knowledge uh, and experience in this academy. So they start from square one and they bring us through different modules of fire training, uh, emergency medical service training, um, and then some specialty, uh, different specialty uh, backgrounds such as hazmat, um, extrication. Um, it's a 22-week program. Each module has hands-on, so there's book work um, and hands-on in each module, fire, emergency medicine, um, and like I said, hazmat. Um, they, they, they try to mix it up with a little bit of both. For hands-on training, they get to practice on some of the basics, simple things, like putting out a car fire, climbing ladders into burning structures, saving victims, deploying firefighting equipment, and in general going where most of us would not care to follow. As we have seen, apprenticeship training in Wisconsin is a tried and true method of imparting skills to workers in many trades and vocations. It has both deep historic roots and many significant modern applications. Since 1911, Wisconsin has pioneered an educational model for apprentices that has been emulated across America. This model, still founded on the cooperation of employers, organized labor and workers, educators and government, has represented a legacy of success. It is success that can be built upon for our future. But what do apprentices and some of those responsible for their training think about apprentice training in Wisconsin? Let's listen. I wanted to get into masonry. So I started out like with, you know, with the labor and everything. It's just out there on the floor, you know, out there. Here, you have time, you know, you're in the classroom. There's a lot of different things that you can learn, blueprint and different stuff like that. And it's kind of hands-on, but if you don't understand something, it's, they can walk you through it, you know, in the shop. They can sit and walk you through whatever tour it is. When you're out there learning, they just throw you on the job site. It's a lot of small things you miss, safety being the biggest one. Just good all-around work. I was always going to be in the construction trade. And uh, I had the best position I found, you know. I had fun work, hard work, but good work. I never saw myself going back to school after high school, but found myself back in here, and it's a good experience. I like it a lot. It's uh, I've been real passionate about being an electrician for a while, and since I got in, it's I enjoy it a lot. I feel I'm learning everything I need to and then some more through the apprenticeship program. I would recommend this program for, for someone just come on, coming out of high school. I got in it two weeks out of high school and loved every minute of it. Um, the hands-on is great. Uh, Teachers, everything they go, they go through everything step by step. It's it's really really good. I like it. This is definitely the way to learn. Uh, it's not, you know, you're not getting thrown into it on the job when it's a little too late. You know, you need to learn hands on and and get input input from uh, you know a bunch of other construction people what they go through. There's a huge f future in roofing. There's always construction. Everybody's building. Um, you can you can help a lot of people. I do heavy highway for Zenith Tech. So I've been doing overlays, you know, parapet, parapet walls, abutments. It's only my second year. I started a little late, but I like it. You know, pays well, work hard, it's all right. To be honest, I love it. I mean, you know, I've, I've come four years through the apprenticeship and the guys on the job, I mean, even to this day, I, you know, if I got questions, I. You know, speak to the guys, the journeymen that have had a little more, bit more experience than I have, and you know, we all work together pretty good out there. I think, you know, being successful and and having a pretty good life, I'd, I mean, I, I'd, I'd recommend it to anybody that that's serious about doing it and going through it, and and, you know, just loving the union. The schooling and the the actual working with uh, the journeymen. Um, I came in with a maintenance background, but um, you soon find out that there's a lot you don't know, and actually being able to work on the floor does help in the uh, the real world application because you get hands-on experience. 
Oh, yes, absolutely. I recommend it for anybody who enjoy cutting hair and has a passion for cutting hair and wants to advance in the career. Apprenticeship is the best way to go. My father was on the department and then my mother was on the department. They met. Um, so I guess you could say it's in my genes, I guess, you know. The most attractive thing I think is the the community. You know, whether that whether you're talking about the fire station community whether you're talking about the community we serve, um, there's so much pride that firefighters have, you know, and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll do anything to protect that reputation. I, I think that women can do whatever they set their minds to just like a man can, you know. There's a lot of things that women do that men can't do. I mean, it's, it's up to the person. Depends on your drive and what you, what you want to do. You know, you got to take opportunities as they're presented to you and and work with it. Like I said, I honestly believe apprenticeship is the way to go. It's good quality, on-the-job, hands-on training through an organization. You're getting your schooling and your training paid for, and it gives you a, a skill, a skill that's, you know, a powerful skill. But wh whoever, you know, definitely put it together, put together something definitely really good. I mean, I like the, the whole idea of, like I said, you know, being able to earn while you learn. 100th anniversary, I mean, that's, that's heavy stuff. I mean, uh, and, and not only in construction, it's, you know, industry and service work, too. I mean, it's, it's a, if you think about the origins of apprenticeship in the old guilds, right. the Ben Franklin learning how to run the yes. printing press, I mean, this is, this is, this is pretty um, heavy duty stuff. I think it's a, an excellent example of labor management cooperation. It uh, works very well. Yeah, our apprenticeship program in the state of Wisconsin is, uh, sets the standard for the nation. We have the oldest and probably the most well-developed apprenticeship program in the nation. Uh, you're talking about 100 years of history. Wisconsin Apprenticeship Training. It's our past, our present, and our future.